Burmeister Carey. I'm a senior sales person with, with Best Mix and um, have had two stints with Best Mix. Uh, one started in 2012 and was just under eight years. And then I, I took a hiatus for, for three years and am back um, and just just over a year now back with Best Mix. In, in my previous stint, I had uh, really the honor of, of working with Jim Dunn. Uh, he, he was at a, a different larger company back then, and I'll let him share that information. Uh, but really just a, a great opportunity to work with him and his previous team and that company. And, you know, it was a major learning curve for me earlier in my career with, with Best Mix. Uh, prior to that, I have some history with Cargill Animal Nutrition and then also with uh, United Animal Health. So uh, look forward to, to having this, this chat with Jim. Jim, you want to do an intro? Yeah, so I'm Jim Dunn. Um, I worked uh, for Archer Daniels Midland ADM when uh, Milo and I first met. Um, I've since taken early retirement from ADM and I work with uh, Cornerstone Ag Management for a while and, and now uh, pretty much just consult on my own. I still work with the Cornerstone Group, just in a little bit different mode than just working for them directly. Um, inside of ADM, I started in research. Uh, I was involved in, in developing bypass proteins for uh, ag, uh, ag processing. Um, worked in research until 2006 or 07, moved into technical support, which time um, I was advising the research team and the technical team in the field for ADM, and we started looking for other modeling software from the ones that we helped a company develop. Um, the development wasn't going as fast as we needed it to, and so probably in 07, 08, we started looking around. Um, I continued to work in tech support until um, 2010. I moved into a general managed sales position in Indiana uh, with two plants and the sales force under my belt, along with still advising the research group on, on field trials and field nutrition. And also kept working on this, what do we do about our modeling program that we were struggling with. And so um, that continued for another two or three years. And at that time, we met Best Mix. Um, the first meeting was, I believe, in 2012, was about the time that I was moving into a commercial business manager's role, um, now moving from Indiana to Quincy, Illinois. And um, that became, as a commercial business manager, one of my primary focuses. Moving us off the platform we were on, we had decided by that time definitely to move. We weren't just unhappy at this point in time. It was untenable. And we started becoming more interested in other options. And we were looking probably at three or four different options at the time. Had several meetings with the Best Mix team and met Milo and, and then all of the technical team inside of Best Mix. Uh, and then started to work on making the decision. And when you're gonna move a platform of 150 users from an old platform to a new one and this, uh, size of the check that gets involved with doing that inside of ADM takes a lot of persuasion internally. And so as much of my job was an external move, it also was getting all of us to make an internal move inside of a large uh, multinational company. So from there, um, we kept working on it in 2015, I believe, is when we actually decided to make the move. And then became all the technical issues getting through the ADM firewall, which was very frustrating for a research slash technical slash sales slash business manager. And I had many conversations with the IT specialists in which they showed me the onslaught of all the people trying to access the ADM system from the outside world. Um, normally, when you're in the United States, you think about all the people that can get into your system from the United States, but um, they were very quick to point out that, you know, the <laughs> the people at players at war <laughs> are definitely looking for ways to get inside the company. And ADM was very, very concerned about using an outside vendor 
especially one based in Europe at the time. Right. And so we had to convince them um, the reasons why we needed to do that. But then we also had to play ball with ADM and get through the ADM firewall, which, as Milo knows, we spent many, many months mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to get through the ADM firewall. So, you know, there had to be a lot of really good reasons to go from where we were to best mix, and there were at the time. Fantastic. Yeah, we were we were cloud based before cloud based was cool. You know, right? Um, it, it it was still um, pretty sketchy to to jump on that type of platform, not especially in agriculture. You know, it's um, a little bit of of um, a straggler when it comes to technology, and so uh, you guys were brave. <laughs> you know, to to take that leap, um, and you know, without I I remember pushback also from the the field people of oh I, I won't have access things like that um and if i recall correctly after you went live we didn't hear a word about the access concerns. no that was that was probably for all the pre all the things that we did up front and all the concerns up front that was probably the last thing that we worried about or whatever everybody yeah. you know very rarely even then did you really take out your computer and actually access it right in the field. Right. Now, today in many of those places, you could do that. Uh, most of the time you printed off your report and you went and talked about it because you, you're not gonna be able to take the farmer through whatever was going on on the screen anyway. You, it's right. much easier to print off the reports and give him the data that he needed. And we really didn't have any problems. We had great access at all of our plants and most of anything close to a large, um, you know, any kind of a metropolitan area, we we had really good access. And obviously, as that migrated into 16, 17, 18, it just continued to improve. And we really had no issues with the cloud base whatsoever. And actually, it provided a nice bit of security um, because the computer, it wasn't just on the computer, it was also on the cloud. And so now if a computer went down, we could get, get all that information back, which was right. one of the selling points, quite honestly. Yeah, that's that's a great point. And and another thing that's that's changed since then, um, it's we're SOC two certified now. So that whole security, cybersecurity piece, uh, we're we're really proud of that fact, and and worked really hard to get that that certification. Um, so even even more comfortable with with the security around a cloud based platform. Um, we've also moved, you know, our our. Um, environment to the U.S., so it's it's not in only in Europe now. Right. Um, so really have evolved in in that you know the Americas region. Um, <clears throat> but ADM and and your efforts were a major major part of that that progress and that success. Well, as I was pushing on that firewall issue, because as as uh, you remember, my a lot of my time was spent with Philip at the time. Just getting through all that, and and we had to go through huge hoops getting data across, and you know migrating and all the specialized codes for a very short window, and all the things that we had to do. And you know I kept pushing back on our team, and you know I just said these people are friends; they're working with us. But I'll never forget one of the conversations I had is, can you imagine if China uses Best Mix to get to us? And, you know, I'm not thinking of anything like China or Russia or anything like that. I'm just right. thinking of, you know, typical hackers or other things to get in. Now, when you start talking about state actors or whatever that could at that time potentially use best mix to get to an ADM server, that kind of changed the whole conversation. So Certainly. so the whole security thing was a, was a really big deal back then. And it, obviously it still is. So everything that you can do or whatever and you have done. To, to become certified um, really helps the situation. Yeah. So in in your time using Best Mix and your experience with Best Mix and, and really um, even, even the team, I, I can say you've been a critical um, part of, of our success, honestly. You've helped, you know, to, to vet out the models as we've ensured that, you know, they're they're loaded and accurate and ready for use. Um, and so you've you've really been a, a great partner of ours, but also uh, you you can be a critic, 
too. You know, if if we're not doing something right, um, you have let us know at times that we're not doing something right. Uh, so what is what has been? Uh, I don't know. It, it could be a biggest challenge, biggest opportunity. It could be you know a a, a biggest win. Um, whatever whatever you you want to share, but an, a situation where you worked with Best Mix. And maybe it started out a little rough, but boy, did it turn out great or, you know, uh, any any of those kind of stories. Well, the if you remember, one of the big things inside of ADM, I mean, probably the biggest win was bringing the ADM uh, dairy model that we had on top of the NRC dairy model at the time, because the 2021 NASA model that we use today wasn't in existence. Right. And so we had several components of a fat model and some other things that we were doing and i remember a time at ipp the ipp convention where we were hunkered down in a hotel and we were trying to make all that work and one of your team members put together a model regression set of equations or whatever that solved the problem and we did all that in about two and a half or three hours from the time that we sat down it was pretty impressive so i would say that still has to rank as the biggest win right um always the the kind of stuff that we're doing when you're kind of on the cutting edge it's always getting that done you know and even with adapting the models that we have today um you know we have a new beef model or whatever that we're working with and a new dairy model that we're working with getting that done you know quickly and timely and still being able to provide the answers that's always the biggest challenge right and i think it's a challenge for everybody um, trying to keep up with technology. That's absolutely, absolutely the bit the biggest challenge as far as that goes. So uh, what if I, I have to ask the question, what if you had to do your job tomorrow uh, without without best mix? <laughs> oh my. A uh, huge learning curve or whatever. You know, I'm uh, fully integrated. So um, wherever I would go, and it's probably the only platform that I know of. I guess maybe there's one or two. Uh, no, I, I can't really think of any, you know, because because I do rations in swine, dairy, and beef. And I do some poultry rations, and we run rabbit rations and all kinds of good stuff. There's enough flexibility around knowing how to do it. Um, yes. Plus, all the ingredients come along with every one of those databases, and that's really helpful. Um, there's a lot of things in the dairy database that just simply isn't in the ones that they chose in the NRC for the swine and the beef ones. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of those commercial ingredients that I can bring in that's got everything preloaded and all that. And that really, so it would be very, very difficult. Um, I would have to, I'm not sure, you know, Milo, I'm getting close to retirement. I might just quit. <laughs> 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 no, well, no, but I mean, it's just it's just the learning curve. You know, I mean, we spend a lot of time doing it right. and um, the learning curve for the, for that is is uh, pretty steep when you're going elsewhere. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking back to when um, you had said uh, to, to one of my associates, I can't do my job without best mix. And yeah. understand that, you know, yeah, it, it it would be much more difficult. I'm sure you can, but the notion behind that statement is sure um, a fantastic testament to to best mix. Um, and and really, um, for me, when I was on the customer side, where you know you are, um, the service office offered by and support offered by best mix uh, is really stand alone in the industry right now as far as the experience I've had and the things I've heard it's it's really difficult to get support at times um, right. from from different providers software providers and that's one thing that that our team uh, because of that has chose to really severely focus on that that support model well and I access that kind of four different ways so there's a uh, kind of basic support in America. There's the best mix, like whatever hotline that you can submit something, you know, you get something going and you run into something on a Friday afternoon and you really can't, you're not going to need it until the next week. Anyway, you can submit it to best mix and you'll definitely have an answer 
most of the time that comes from Maldeheim or from, from Belgium. Yeah. Um, there's a tech support individual in the United States that I integrate or interact directly with. And then there's a lady in the Netherlands that I also interact with that I can, you know, we used to get on Teams calls a lot. Um, we were trying to bring the models in as they came across, and I was trying to do some troubleshooting with them. Most of the stuff that we do now is either handled by text or email because most of the things are single questions and like, hey, Milo, what time is the meeting this afternoon? Or, right. you know, I've got an answer here that doesn't make sense and here's why. Um, it's a very direct question or with a very direct answer. So we, ha we have uh, very few Teams calls um, at the point. Um, we are migrating some of my data to one of my customers that is also a best mix customer now and so the migration of some of that data off my co my computer specific computer onto the cloud so that so that they can get up we've had to we've had to utilize some of the tech support for that but other than that and that's also something that's uh really handy being able to uh <laughs> pretty much like give the solutions to your customers that are theirs anyway. Right. I mean, not only the not only the ration or whatever, but really give them the solution and the why and all the, you know, there's a lot of ingredients out there today mm -hmm. um, that they don't have necessarily in their databases and stuff that, you know, I can just, I've created it because I've had to go get it and um, we can just give it to them, which is through kind of the import and the export kind of stuff off the cloud again. And yep. using the, uh, all the tools inside of Best Mix that are really, really, really helpful. Yeah, and I would say that standard um, functionality of import export has been probably one of the the favorite uh, functionalities in in our cloud based Best Mix four solution or Best Mix recipe management because um, the the flexibility that allows you know of of collaborating. Um, you know, with with different departments, uh, customers, wh whatever the the need is at the time. Yeah, I have one particular nutritionist that I work with, and sometimes, um, because I do the tags for the one of the plants that sh she works with, she will just ask me to, you know, take the ration or put it together, or there'll be some some part of the nutrients. She has the recipe. She doesn't understand. She doesn't quite have the complete um, portfolio of the nutrients that she needs, so yeah. we'll just reconstruct it, and she'll just send it, and we'll we'll fill kind of fill in the blanks, and then we'll be able to create a legal tag from that. And Fantastic. you know that's that's pretty incredible. Yeah, yeah, yep, true. So I mean, you've really touched on quite a few, but I I think some of the the key functionality that that has been a, a benefit is that whole the tagging program, the import export. Have you used the the sample um, import export or sample basket solution? No, I haven't, and it's because of the customers that I have. So there's a couple different things. Um, you know, inside of inside of uh, ADM, we use multi blend all the time to try and come up with the best price, and that functionality is in Best Mix. Yep. Uh, most of the time. It's a specific ingredient for a specific customer for a specific ration. 99% uh, of the time. So you don't, you know, a mala blend kind of thing in that. And that yep. Uh, yep. doesn't really. So basically what you do is you sub it in and out and you uh, play around with the price a little bit and you get them the answer because it's a lot more simple of an answer. Right. Um, the multi blend function or whatever is a very very valuable tool if you're trying to manage um, a plant and you're trying to make sure that you've got the best ingredients in the bins for the money. Uh, that changes really rapidly now. Um, that was one of the main reasons why we came to Best Mix to begin with, because we were one of the first people to use alternative ingredients, especially in swine rations, and uh, everybody's kind of caught on to that now. But making sure that you know you know that your your price, best price, is the best price for the customer is really, really, really important. Right. I mean, that's that's ROI right there. 
for yeah. Your yeah, and that's how you justify the cost. Yep. Yep. Um, do you have other thoughts, questions, statements? Um, I think, you know, you've uh, evolved over time <laughs> and that's always not always that, you know, you've tried to grow and evolve at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so it's very critical that you add the right people. And I think there's been a bunch of times or whatever, the people that I've been associated with are absolutely top notch. I mean, that was one of the reasons why we went to best mix to begin with is just the the stored intellect that was there i mean it was pretty obvious right um you know those people have been added on to and you know some of those people have changed a little bit but all the people or whatever are very very technically sound and that's pretty important yeah especially when you're talking to a research guy in a tech support role <laughs> <laughs> Very true. You don't want to have to explain <laughs> yourself 50 times to get your point across, you know, right. and, and everybody has really been very easy for me to work with. Um, like you said, I've been pretty direct sometimes, and there's been times when I've been supremely frustrated with some of the look outlook of the, you know, just the, the output that I want to give to my customers or whatever for the new models coming in, because I'm always trying to, you know, especially when we added the beef model, especially when we added the dairy model. And um, they've been very good at coming around and trying to do their best at, at uh, get, getting what the customer needs. And that's, at the end of the day, that's the important part. And I would say the one thing I've seen from both sides is, is our team and, and you in ensuring things are correct, you're, you're both relentless. Um, just that pursuit of, I'll, I'll say excellence rather than perfection, because I don't know if there is a perfection. You know, it's 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 right. evolving all the time, but absolute excellence um, and, and not satisfied until you've achieved that. And I, I see that both, you know, from you as as customer, but also from the my my associates, my team members right. who. Um, you know, even staying up to all hours of the night to, to work on this and see if they can get it done and make sure it's correct and, and don't give up. So, um, yeah, I think you, you, you have always been an ideal partner for, for Best Mix. And so we, of course, appreciate um, that with you, that you, you support and partner and challenge us, right? So it, it's, a, it's a true partnership because it's it it goes both ways <laughs> well one of the times i had a customer ask me you know i i got an answer or whatever that i didn't believe in or whatever and he says well how do you know the computer's wrong and i said well i take out my calculator and i do the equations myself and i don't get the, if i don't get the, an answer that's reasonable you know they the animals don't always read the protocol but they don't ever lie you know right. and <laughs> I mean, <laughs> at the end of the day, the animals are always right. It doesn't matter what species that you're in. And you've got to, you know, all the models that we use are just giant calculators. And if you can't actually do the calculations yourself and come up with the answer that that it should be, I mean, you ought to be able to do the math and you ought to be able to get the answer that. And, and you know, like a lot of times somebody asks me or whatever, what's the what's the biggest challenge? And I always think the biggest challenge is the conversion from metric to English in the equations. Because if you convert from metric to English too quick, all right, you need to stay in metric until the answer and then convert it to English. You can't convert the, you know, and right. it's it's like one of those things inside. It's like, you know, that that it just it's like kind of an obvious answer. But you'd be surprised how many times. You know, we're talking about, you know, square inches or 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 pounds right. <laughs> when something should be in kilograms or in metric, you know, and right. that's that's one of the challenges um, about using, you know, European systems and American systems. And, and um, you know, it's something that we've just learned as we've gone on. And that's one of the reasons why you have to be just absolutely relentless or whatever to make sure that the equations are right and make sure that they give you an answer 
that is actually physiologically right. possible. Right. And, you know, like I say, the animals don't <laughs> read the protocol, but they right. never lie. <laughs> <laughs> So I do have a question, and it's a, maybe a little bit more on a personal side, but so, you know, you you retired from, from ADM and, you know, kind of are, are not full-time at Cornerstone, but, you know, still doing a little work there. Are, do you have any plans to become a professor or to do any, you know, talks um, at different agricultural industry events? So I help the people uh, at South Dakota State. So I, I'm uh, involved with the communication seminar that they put on every year. Mm -hmm. And so I help them with that. And there's probably 15 or 20 now, all land-grant ag institutions from North Dakota State to Auburn to Georgia to, you know, all the ag kids come there. And uh, we help them with their communication skills. Mm -hmm. um, That's fantastic. Yeah, so the, one of the professors there, I was really frustrated when I was, I don't know, about the time we were doing this best mix thing, I was trying to interview some students at Midwest Animal Science meetings, and I had some terrible interviews, and people had a hard time communicating, and I was complaining to her that, you know, I don't care how smart they are, they can't even communicate with you, and at that some point in time, nobody's going to care, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, we came up with this, or she came up with this uh, communication, uh, and I it's it's really a seminar quote class. It's a one credit class now at several places, and it's an ongoing thing. And it culminates in an Octo at the end of October every year um, with a chance for them to present, and then we have some roundtable discussions, and then you can help them. I can help them with their and there. You know, I might. You know, I I was at one point in time an adjunct um, before I started down the research path. I, you know, I, I enjoy what I'm doing right now. And, um, it just doesn't seem like there's anything that's really, there's two colleges in Quincy, either one of them could work. Mm -hmm. Um, I haven't pursued that cause I haven't really cared to, because I kind of enjoy the thing I'm doing at South with South Dakota state. And then, um, you know, I just, it just kind of, you know, it's some of those things are a little bit serendipitous. You know, I mean, yeah. it kind of it's kind of how you line up with and a lot of it. At my stage of my career, it's who you, the people that you get to work with. As much as the job that you're actually doing, if you're around fun people or whatever, then it continues to be fun and you like to be challenged. Um, putting up with all the stuff that I did inside a big bureaucratic monstrosity or whatever, probably not up for that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I just not, you know, well. so. I, and I ask from the perspective of you have so much knowledge and so much experience in the industry uh, that that you sharing, you know, spotlights yeah. part part of it or all of it or but but sharing sharing that knowledge and that history um, is really invaluable to, you know, to the rest of the youngsters coming up in the industry. And so. Uh, yeah, just if if there is opportunity, you know, if we have our our user conference that we're talking about having in the U.S., we'll probably be begging you to come come present and and join us and and chat with folks sure. at that event. Yeah, and I'd be happy to do that. I guess anything I can do to help, you know, I've been pretty much of a an advocate and um, will continue to be an advocate. You know, yeah, we sure I've appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Um, any final statements? Uh, yeah, I got it. I've got one that I have to ask you or whatever. You went away. Why did you come back? So, um, really, it so it's it's hard to let me let me step back a minute. So I went away uh, when COVID happened, yep. and um, kind of that whole traveling and international and all of that got to be a bit of a challenge. Um, hard to work, obviously, because a lot of a lot of people weren't working. Uh, and I was at that time a contractor, so I did not get unemployment pay. I didn't get any of that. So it was it was a good time to you know cut ties and and get a job, a typical you know right. W two type job in in the U S. So I I did that. Um, I was there three years, and then I I actually was laid off because they were going to put that business up to be acquired. 
uh, which it has been. So the the um, software company that I was working for has since been sold by that parent company and is owned by another now. And so I think I was kind of a a P&L, clear some dollars right. off the P&L situation. Um, but Best Mix reached out to me when they saw that I was not, um, that I was looking oh. For work. And so, I mean, that was huge that they, they reached out to me, huge compliment, you know, to, to, right. to me. Um, and then just talking through with them, you know, the management had turned over a bit. Um, so, you know, a different, different team, different dynamics. Uh, also the, the U S team, when I was here before, when I left, there were three employees in the U S and now there's close to 25. Right. That makes a huge difference. Um, there was a, around 150 employees uh, globally. Now there's over 200. Uh, our parent company is is very supportive, uh, and they have over 800 employees. So it really the strength of Bethmix and uh, the ability sure. to to really focus on our products and really invest in them. Uh, it's easy to sell something you believe in, and yeah. I've truly truly i've had you know a lot of a lot of exposure to different formulation systems uh and i i truly believe best mix is the best product you can get i, I believe it's the best formulation ration recipe management solution in the market hands down uh with in and it continues to get better because we continue to invest in that product and make it better and and develop new functionality and and uh, I think that's kind of unique. Uh, I don't know that all companies, uh, once a once a product has hit kind of that threshold uh, where you know it's it's mature, it's plateaued. Uh, we didn't allow it really to plateau, so we've we've yep, kept, we've pushing kept and pushing. Yep. Um, and so I'm 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 proud to be back. I'm honored to be back with Best Mix and. Uh, yeah, really, really like working with the products and the team. So, well, I was delighted that you came back because <laughs> you know, getting it, getting the decision through ADM, um, I don't think I would have been able to be successful if you had not been part of the team. Oh. Now, that that has to do though with uh, you know, with any any kind of a big venture like this, and I think this is one thing to take. I mean, there's the technical side of this, but you have to be able to sell the benefits to the people that need to hear it. And a lot of times people making these decisions are, are kind of way up the flagpole and are not at the ground level. So if you can't communicate in the right way, and you can't be positive in the right way, you know, we would have never got it through the ADM gauntlet, you know, right. had it not been sold the correct way. And that that doesn't, I'm not saying, you, you, you got to have the technical base. You have to have the product and all that. But you also have to be able to know how to communicate. And you have to be able to communicate in the language of your customers. And that's probably one of your biggest attributes. Ah, thank you, Jim. I sure appreciate that. So um, I think that's it. I think we covered some great topics. And uh, as always, we appreciate your partnership uh, oh, yeah. and, and all that, you know, we've learned from each other and, um, you know, look forward to that continuing for, for sure. many more years. So Sounds good. Good to talk to you. you good too. luck with all the personal stuff and everything else. Yeah. So, and thanks Sounds for uh, letting me share with you. Uh, great. We appreciate it so much, Jim. Alrighty. Thank, Thank you. you very much. All right. Yep. Bye-bye. Okay.